competing in bodybuilding when I was 21. I'm 28 now. I turned pro last year at my country's nationals. I'll be the first to admit that not every single one of my habits is healthy. I've been taking steroids since I was 18. I'm 43. I might occasionally overeat fast food or go a couple of days without touching a vegetable. But what some people do would make anyone feel better about their own habits. I'm ready to get back to normal. <laughs> From injecting oil into their bodies to steroid use, here are 20 most unfortunate bodybuilding tragedies. Number 20. Dean Warmby. This man drank energy drinks every day. This is what happened to him. Use it as an example of what not to do when you're a fitness fanatic wanting to achieve the perfect bodybuilder's physique. Dean Warmby from Rochdale, Northern England, was a personal trainer who put his body through the absolute ringer. Despite looking like he was in incredible shape, Dean passed away from liver cancer at age 39 and believed his lifestyle was to blame. He would consume 10,000 calories per day through high-calorie junk food like burgers and pizza and would wash them down with up to eight energy drinks every day. Now, you just have to read the label on one can or bottle to know that eight is far too many. His goal was to build up his weight and be at the top of his game. Dean also admitted to taking steroids at the start of his career, saying that everyone did it. When he was diagnosed with liver cancer, everything changed. And also to, you know, help people see that it's... Dean started a Facebook page called Dean's Journey when a tumor was found on his liver. He kept his friends, family, and fans up to date with his progress. His first step, with his partner Charlotte Rigby by his side, involved changing his diet. He cut out sugar and meat and started consuming more natural remedies and vitamins. Dean said he couldn't know if his liver cancer was 100% from his diet, but said energy drinks and red meats might have played a part. Number 19. Mike Matarazzo Bodybuilder Mike Matarazzo was a fan favorite in the 1990s. While he never won any of the dozens of pro shows he entered, he was renowned for how he would poke out his tongue when pulling his muscular pose. This action showed his fans that he was loving every moment of his bodybuilding career, even when he never won. Mike was also adored for being a blue-collar worker who never forgot his roots, although it wasn't until 1991 that he really got noticed. He won the heavyweight class at the 1991 USA, beating legends like Ronnie Coleman and Flex Wheeler. From that point on, Mike was on a trajectory for success. He had some of the most impressive muscles you would have ever seen, and these helped him appear on magazine covers and place highly in internationally renowned competitions. But by the time Mike was 34 years old, something didn't feel right. He participated in his final competition in 2001, and while he considered a comeback in 2004, his health wasn't the best. Mike had been feeling lethargic for many years. By the end of 2004, he was struggling to breathe and coughing up blood. His fiancée rushed him to the hospital where he underwent a triple bypass heart surgery at 38 years old. Mike said his heart problems started when he focused on competitive bodybuilding. He ate up to 7 pounds of red meat daily with no vegetables and was using steroids, growth hormones, and diuretics. Mike said he was physically close to ruined, and that rang true. He suffered a heart attack in 2007, had another bypass surgery, and had a defibrillator installed. By this time, his heart was only working at up to 25% functionality. While he was hoping to get a heart transplant, he passed away in 2014 at the age of 48. Number 18. Andreas Munzer Australian bodybuilder Andreas Munzer was renowned for being highly shredded with paper-thin skin. He was easily one of the most conditioned bodybuilders of his time and was destined for great things. He worked hard and said that there was no secret to his success other than a strict diet, consistent training, and genetics of his muscle fibers. In 1996, just two weeks after traveling to Columbus, Ohio for the coveted Arnold Classic, Andreas suddenly passed away. He 
and keeping my body fat as low as possible. Blood vessels in his stomach had ruptured. Despite doctors' best efforts, he lost his life at age 31. His cause of was noted as dystrophic multiple organ failure. As you might imagine, a high-profile bodybuilder like Andreas Munzer losing their life was breaking news. As the weeks passed, fans got to learn more about Andreas and how he lost his life, including his use of anabolic steroids and diuretics. These were seen as the cause of his death. It was also found out that Andreas had been experiencing severe stomach pain for months. Some reports stated that he had multiple tumors in his liver and an abnormal heart weight of more than twice the average. Have you liked our video and subscribed to our channel yet? Well, you better do it now, or you'll be put on a strict diet like a bodybuilder for the rest of your life. That means no cake. Number 17. Chad Brothers it's always a tragedy when a bodybuilder loses their life, but the passing of Chad Brothers was both tragic and strange at the same time. In 2011, bodybuilder Chad was at Gold's Gym in Colony, New York when he fell off an elliptical machine. Yeah, no worries, just hop back on or take a break, right? Well, not quite. Chad became enraged by what had just happened and started absolutely destroying the gym and the equipment within it. He then turned his attention to other customers and started attacking them. He was absolutely out of control. Now, obviously, the best thing to do was to call the police, so that's what the people at the gym did. When the police arrived, Chad was in no mood to comply. He assaulted the police and was shot with a taser. As the officer began cuffing Chad, he fought back and grabbed a taser. Another fight broke out and Chad was tased twice more before finally being restrained with the help of six people. As he was cuffed again, the police realized Chad was no longer breathing. A later report determined that Chad had steroids and PCP in his system when this huge fight went down. An investigation revealed that Chad had a condition known as agitated delirium, which can happen after a sudden increase in body temperature. His passing was not seen as the police's fault. Number 16. Rich Piana Rich Piana was an American bodybuilder known for winning and placing highly in many competitions, like Mr. California. But his life was tragically cut short at just 46 years old in 2017. The time I won the California overall, to the time I was in the USA, I was seven. Rich's girlfriend, Chanel Jansen, was giving Rich a haircut in their home when he collapsed. He was placed in a medically induced coma and passed away two weeks later. It's believed that Rich had a 27-year history of steroid use, and a police report revealed that there were 20 bottles of testosterone in his home. The later autopsy report put the cause of death as unknown because of many contributing factors and not being able to conduct a toxicology report as there were no specimens to test. The autopsy did, however, find significant heart disease, and no medical professionals could rule out use. Rich also had an enlarged heart and a hardening of the arteries. Basically, he was far from healthy when he passed. Number 15. Dallas McCarver Dallas McCarver was going to make big waves in the bodybuilding scene. The 300-pound bodybuilder was just 21 years old when he earned his pro card and had many wins under his belt in a short space of time. His career was described as promising, especially since he carried as much bulk as the longtime pros. But we first gained insight into what would come in 2017 when Dallas collapsed at the Arnold Classic in Australia. While he did carry on training, he was found unconscious at home mere months later. Food was scattered all around him and was lodged in his esophagi. Many people speculated that he had passed away from choking. But his autopsy report told a much different story. Even though he was just 26 years old at the time of his passing, he was shown to have severe cardiomegaly. This describes abnormal heart enlargement. It's a common sign of human growth hormones and anabolic steroid use. While our hearts are supposed to weigh around 300 grams, Dallas's heart weighed 833 grams. It was even heavier than that of Rich Piana, who passed away with his heart weighing 670 grams. 
The autopsy report also stated that Dallas had experienced an unwitnessed acute cardiac event. Then there was the toxicology report. This showed testosterone abuse. The normal range is between 270 to 1,070 nanograms per deciliter, while Dallas's levels were 660 nanograms per deciliter. He also tested positive for a lethal anabolic steroid called Trenbolone. Number 14. Greg Kovach Greg Kovach was a firm favorite in the bodybuilding world. In the 1990s, he absolutely dominated with his size and strength and had more mass than most other bodybuilders. He could bench press 700 pounds for two reps and perform a 2,025 pound leg press. Even today, Greg is described as one of the strongest pro bodybuilders of all time. Of course, he worked hard for these achievements. At his peak weight of 420 pounds, he was eating 10,000 calories a day. He would eat every two hours and ensure he ate about seven full meals daily, including up to two dozen eggs. I was 21, I'm 28 now. I turned pro last year at my national. Alongside eating so much food, Greg would also perform extreme workouts, hitting the gym up to six times a week for at least an hour. Greg retired from competitive bodybuilding in 2005 to coach competitive athletes and start his own business. However, he sadly passed away in 2013 in Mississauga, Ontario at age 44. The cause was believed to be heart failure. We don't know whether his bodybuilding career contributed. We can only speculate. He was only 44 years old and most people don't go into heart failure that young without a reason. Number 13. Nasser El Sanbati Nasser El Sanbati was a famous bodybuilder known as The Professor. Throughout his professional career, Nasser participated in 53 competitions and consistently ranked highly, like in the top five. Impressive stuff, although he never took out that top spot. He got his nickname, The Professor, because of his intelligence. He was fluent in several languages and wore a distinctive pair of glasses. Nasser passed away from kidney failure and heart complications at just 47 years old in 2013. Because of his illness, he needed a transplant but didn't qualify due to his weak heart. According to his training partner, Nasser had been admitted to the hospital with breathing issues mere months before he passed. This was when he was diagnosed with kidney damage and heart failure and started dialysis treatment. There hasn't been any official word on what actually caused his passing. We don't know whether it was his lifestyle or whether he was predisposed to heart and kidney disease. Number 12. Daniele Secarecci Daniele Secarecci, the world's heaviest male bodybuilder, was just 33 years old when he passed. He was described as a star athlete, but his later years weren't exactly the best. Daniele was accused of trading in anabolic steroids and growth hormones and spent six days in a Milan prison. He gained weight through water retention in those six days and looked severely unwell. A prison doctor told the courthouse that further detention put Daniele at risk of cardiac arrest. The prosecutors agreed to let him return home so he could be closely monitored. He clearly didn't learn anything from his brush with because he remained involved in bodybuilding. In 2013, he was found passed away in his home in Toronto from a suspected heart attack. He had only competed less than one week earlier in the IFBB Nordic Pro Championships. Some sources say that he suffered from a condition that resulted in his heart attack and that he hit his head when he collapsed. Some sources, like Reddit, which aren't exactly known for accuracy, say that he had a post-contest electrolyte imbalance from diuretic use, resulting in cardiac arrhythmia. However, we don't know that for sure. Number 11. Aziz Shaversian Aziz Shaversian, known to his fans as Aziz, was a bodybuilder, model, and personal trainer. He said he originally wanted to get into bodybuilding to impress girls, but it became a passion for him. Aziz achieved much success, not only in bodybuilding, but also in business. He founded his own protein label and clothing line in 2011, and he gained a substantial following online, especially on social media. 
In that same year, Aziz's brother was arrested for being in possession of anabolic steroids. Aziz said he never used steroids and that his physique was from hard work and a strict diet. We might never know if that was true, because Aziz passed away from a heart attack in a sauna while vacationing in Thailand in 2011. While he was taken to the hospital, doctors couldn't resuscitate him. An autopsy later revealed that he had an undiagnosed congenital heart defect and cardiomegaly. This resulted in his cardiac arrest. It's believed he had some symptoms leading up to his passing, like shortness of breath and high blood pressure. Aziz's family also has a history of heart disease. Number 10. Sean Roden Sean Roden was a successful Jamaican-American pro bodybuilder. He was renowned for his impressive results, like winning Mr. Olympia and many other IFBB competitions. He was undoubtedly in his prime. Sadly, Sean passed away from a heart attack in 2021, aged just 46. News of his heart attack shocked many people, but not IFBB pro bodybuilder Stanny Mall Doulangeau. He said that the fatal attack wasn't even the first heart attack Sean had experienced. He had suffered from at least two before. According to Stan, Sean and Stan were supposed to have dinner, but Sean didn't feel well. He was having a hard time breathing and was getting weak. This year's Olympian, when I told people, he ended up in the hospital with his very first heart attack. He was monitored closely after that. It's believed that steroids possibly played a part in Sean's passing. Stan claimed that Sean wasn't overusing them and that he had barely taken them in the two years before his Stan said that he was not saying that steroids didn't cause anything, but that he was not a guy who abused anything. Number 9. Cedric McMillan Cedric McMillan was just 44 years old when he passed away. He suffered a heart attack while on a treadmill. Many people were shocked by Cedric's passing, especially since he was so highly regarded in the bodybuilding community. He was dedicated to his sport and had many incredible results, like first place in the Arnold Classic in 2017. Many people took to social media to share in the heartbreak of his loss, saying things like his infectious smile, larger-than-life personality, and gentle heart would be missed. In 2021, Cedric wasn't competing in bodybuilding competitions. Later, he said it was for health reasons that almost took his life. In 2020, Cedric had trouble breathing after competing in the Arnold Classic. He had been diagnosed with COVID-19 months earlier, but believed he had recovered. However, doctors diagnosed him with pneumonia and he was put on life support. Ready to get back to normal. <laughs> Cedric recovered from his illness and got back into training rather than focusing on his recovery. In the weeks before his death in 2021, Cedric said he had been having issues with his stomach and was struggling to keep food down. According to some news reports, his passing was due to health complications caused by COVID-19 and a previous cycling accident. Number 8. Greg Valentino Greg Valentino was tired of seeing guys half his lifting age making bigger gains than him in bodybuilding. He was working just as hard, but not seeing the same results. All of a sudden, Greg had absolutely enormous 27-inch arms that thrust him into the spotlight. How had he suddenly made all these impressive gains? Well, steroids, possibly. But Greg took it one step further. He started using Synthol, a type of oil some bodybuilders inject under the muscle tissue to push the muscles upward. They then look bigger and bulkier. You let bodybuilding get so far out of hand. Greg paired the Synthol with Equipoise and Propionate to achieve strength and localized growth. His 21-inch muscles quickly grew to 27 inches, but it didn't gain him the reputation he wanted. Bodybuilding fans were disappointed, and it even drove a wedge between him and his daughter. Eventually, it took one bad event for Greg to call it quits. After reusing a needle, Greg punctured an abscess. It caused an infection, and pus and blood started pouring out of his arm. His bicep had to be cut open and drained of all the synthol, pus, and blood. That put a stop to his synthol use for good. Number 7. Joe Linder 
Joe Linder, also known as Joe Stetics, was a bodybuilding influencer with a substantial online following. People loved watching his videos of workouts and training on his Instagram platform. Here, he had over 8 million followers. Sadly, Joe passed away in 2023 at age 30. According to his girlfriend, Nietzsche, Joe had been experiencing neck pain a few days before his passing. An aneurysm was later revealed as the cause. Nietzsche said that she was with Joe in the room and he was putting a necklace on her that he had made for her. They laid down, cuddled, and Joe was in her arms before he passed away. According to the American Heart Association, aneurysms can be caused by injuries, hereditary causes, tobacco use, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. In the weeks leading up to Joe's passing, he had expressed fears that his overtraining could result in a heart attack due to a rare muscular condition diagnosis that he had received. Joe had rippling muscle disease, a genetic condition that causes heightened muscle sensitivity. So then it's like when it looks like this, so I'm pressing this way now. In the past, Joe had also been open about getting testosterone replacement therapy. He had said, trust me, I tried to stop, but be aware, it might have long-term effects for your life. Number 6. Mariola Sabanovic Suarez Mariola Sabanovic Suarez was at the very start of her bodybuilding career in 2019. She had just finished competing at the 2018 Tampa Pro, her very first professional event in which she placed 16th. She was likely even preparing for future events. But just two days later, Mariola suddenly passed away from a heart attack. She was just 43 and had one daughter with her husband, Daniel Sabanovic. The Dutch athlete had spent an incredible 18 weeks preparing for the event, and it was grueling to say the least. She had a restrictive diet and had to train for hours at the gym. Three days after the event that had meant so much to her, she woke up in the middle of the night with trouble breathing. Hours later, her teenage daughter found her passed away in her hotel bed. Her husband, Daniel, told the police that his wife had no existing health concerns. However, she had been using clenbuterol and steroids. Clenbuterol is a substance with steroid-like effects that people with breathing disorders use. After a toxicology analysis, it was also revealed that she had testosterone and boldenone in her system. This is a horse steroid bodybuilders sometimes use to speed up their metabolism and build muscle. The medical examiner concluded that Mariola passed away from myocarditis, possibly related to anabolic steroid use. Number 5. Ronnie Coleman Even if you're not really a bodybuilding fan or follower, you've probably heard the name Ronnie Coleman. He is easily one of the most celebrated bodybuilders of all time, with Arnold Schwarzenegger calling him the evangelist for bodybuilding. He won eight Mr. Olympia titles over his career and had a long, long list of accolades. The man is a legend. But he has also paid the price in his later years. His rigorous training schedule caused him a great deal of pain, especially as he never let up even after experiencing an injury playing football. Ronnie then experienced a herniated disc. It got worse from there. Over the course of his later career, Ronnie underwent 13 surgeries because of the physical exertion he had subjected his body to. His first surgery was on his back, followed by another one for his back, one for his hips, and several more for his back. He now has many screws and metal plates in his body. Still, Ronnie continued to work out, and his training routines meant that he broke the surgical screws in his spine. These then caused him to break his skeletal bones. The pain became so bad that Ronnie couldn't walk. Now, his entire spine has been fused with screws and metal cages. Every single disc has been operated on, and he has a scar from his bottom to his ribs. In one of his most recent interviews, Ronnie admitted that he fears never being able to walk again. Number 4. Valdir Segato Valdir Segato, also known as the Brazilian Hulk, was a bodybuilder who passed away young at just 55. While he was already massive back in 2016, having doubled his bicep mass, he wanted to be bigger. 
he was injecting himself with synthol for many years, even while knowing it could cause a stroke or infections. He was intent on getting huge biceps, back muscles, and pectorals, and would achieve his goals at any cost. He was even told that if he continued using the injections, he would face nerve damage, muscle disfigurement, and amputation. Clearly, Valdir's decision surrounding Synthol caught up with him. He passed away on his birthday in 2022. It's believed that he experienced shortness of breath before passing away from a heart attack. According to his neighbor in Gibera Preto, Sao Paulo, Valdir had come crawling through the back house to the front at around 6 a.m. one morning. He knocked on the neighbor's mother's window and asked her to help him because he was dead. The last time they had helped him was four months before his passing. He had been wheezing, suffering from shortness of breath, and found it challenging to talk. The neighbor's brother said he can't help but be shaken by Valdir's because he was a good person who didn't hurt anyone. However, he did say that the only harm he did to himself was by using synthol. Number 3. Scott Milne Scott Milne, also known as the Canadian Moose, passed away in 2020 at the age of 45. The pro bodybuilder had a stroke, although some sources report it as a heart attack. They're actually similar, except that one involves the blood vessels in the brain and the other involves blood vessels in the heart. Scott had overcome many challenges in his life to be in the best shape for bodybuilding. When he was preparing for his pro debut at the Night of Champions, he was involved in a serious accident. He broke his neck in three places, lacerated his spleen, liver, and kidney, and punctured his lungs. Doctors said he was lucky to be alive and even fortunate to be able to walk. They said he would never compete again. But just one year later, he was training harder than ever and returned to the stage in 2004 for the Toronto Pro. It didn't seem like anything could stop him. There hasn't been any mention of steroid abuse or so what caused his stroke or heart attack remains unclear. Number 2. Justin Vicky Justin Vicky was a 33-year-old bodybuilder from Indonesia who achieved some great things in his professional bodybuilding career. However, he experienced a tragic accident at the Paradise Gym in Bali, Indonesia in 2023. He was performing a 400-pound squatting exercise that required him to squat with a barbell. He couldn't complete the lift and fell forward. The weight bar snapped his neck and head forward. The force of the impact resulted in Justin's neck being broken. It compressed the nerves connected to his heart and respiratory systems. While he was rushed to the hospital, he succumbed to his injuries. Justin had previously described back squats as one of the most dangerous exercises and had provided education on them. While he was working out with a partner and another colleague when the accident happened, there was nothing anyone could do. Number 1. Romario Dos Santos Alves Brazilian bodybuilder Romario Dos Santos Alves is lucky to be alive. As a teenager, he was so self-conscious about his small arms that he decided to use a dangerous method to get the muscle tone he was looking for, synthol. Before long, he had the Hulk-like arms he was looking for. But it came at a cost. At one point, Romario was injecting himself with 4 milliliters of the synthol per week. While this did bulk up his arms by about 20% in just 9 months, he experienced health problems. He was experiencing low energy levels and breathing difficulties. His wife told him that she would leave him if he didn't stop. It reached the point where doctors told Romario that they would need to amputate both arms to save his life. Fortunately, he was given a second chance on the same day he was set to lose his arms. The doctors were able to remove the synthol and allowed him to keep his arms. Mario said he was thankful to God for putting his family in his life so he could see there's more to life than big muscles. Now his arms are a much more normal size and he was able to keep his life. Most of us would understand that it feels good to be at the top of your game. But I think it's fair to say that some of these bodybuilders took it way too far. 
What do you think was the biggest tragedy out of all these you've learned about? And do you ever think you could get into bodybuilding? If you do, play it safe. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.